Okay, Parshas Bishalach. There's one passage here that, that is quite curious. You know, the Jewish people leave Egypt in a very triumphant manner. And that's what the Torah describes here. When they leave Egypt at the beginning of the Parsha, by Yechazek Hashem Eslev Paro Melech Mitzrayim, that Hashem hardened Paro's heart, by Yudof Acharei Bnei Yisrael, and he pursued the Jewish people. Uvnei Yisrael Yotzeim Biyad Rama. But the Jewish people left with raised hands. And when you think about a person, anyone who watched the Super Bowl, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you see that guy in the end zone, right, who runs and makes the touchdown or catches the ball in the end zone and then lifts up his hands as a victory, that's the image that Yad Rama is supposed to try and represent for us. And Rashi says, what is Yad Rama? Um, you know, it's a very interesting Rashi. It's two Rashis on that Pasuk. It says, Vayichazek Hashem et Leiv Paro, that God hardened Paro's heart. Why? Because, Shahayat Tole Im Lirdofim Lav, that Paro was ambivalent. He was vacillating. Should I go? Should I not go after them? V'chizek et libo lirdof. And God hardened his heart to go after them. And biyad rama, where by contrast, this is like a Rashi contrast, Paro is ambivalent and the Jewish people are triumphant. Paro is like, doesn't know what to do. And the Jewish people have this absolute certainty that we are the champions. Gevura, gevoha, umeforsemet. They have this this lofty uh, strength. They have this newfound strength and, and, and sense of, of championship that is public now. They, they publicize it. They're ready. You know, we are the ones. So it's almost like lifting up your hands to demonstrate, look at us, look at us. We're the winners. We won. Now, does that, is that unsettling for you in any sense? Is that, what is the Torah trying to communicate to us when it represents the Jewish people with that sense of triumphalism? Are you, are you supposed to feel joy and a sense of victory when you read it? Or are you supposed to feel somewhat discomfited from it because, hey guys, you know, it's not like you left on your own power. Hashem did all these miracles for you. Maybe a little bit of humility is called for at this point. Or, on the other hand, heroism and championship, like this is amazing. How can anyone not feel this tremendous sense of victory after years of generations of being slaves, we're free at last, free at last, right? And that's the, so you could look at it in one of two ways, right? But also, yes. what about like, that's, that hasn't happened yet. That hasn't happened yet. I know, but it's the same idea that the Egyptians are going to, are suffering and... At this point, they're not suffering. At this point, you know, I mean, What's in the past has happened in the past. They've had 10 plagues. Their firstborn have died. But we're out of here. And maybe they even waited until they left before they started doing the victory dance. You know, they didn't want to do it in the face of the Egyptians. They had sensitivity. But now that we're free, we're free. It's very hard to expect the Jews to have compassion for the people that have been killing them and oppressing them for generations. Um, you find the same language, exactly the same language, uh, in Parshas Mase, when the Torah records the, the, the traveling of the Jewish people through the desert. At the very beginning of that uh, chronicle of their travels through the desert, it says that when they left on the 15th day of the first month, which is the month of Nisan, Yatsu b'nei sol b'yad rama le'enei kol mitzrayim. They left Egypt with an uplifted hand in, in the presence of all of Egypt. Now, Yad Rama, however, does not have a good connotation in other parts of the Torah. Let's look at source number three. In Sefer Bamidbar, we are talking about a person who willfully commits an act of avodazara, an act of idolatry. And the Torah here says, Vahanefesh asher ta'aseh biyad Rama, that if a person acts flagrantly, that's what Yad Rama means over here with a lifted hand of pride, and yeah, I'm going right ahead. Min ha'ezrach min ha'ger, 
It doesn't matter whether they're a resident or whether they're a stranger. Et Hashem hu if he blasphemes against God, and that person will be cut off from his people. So the word Yad Rama is used with a negative connotation over here. Um, it's also used with a negative connotation in, in Sefer Devarim. Um, were it not for the oppression of our enemies, the Jewish people would be able to say, hey, our hands are lifted high. God is not on our side. What helps us remember that we need God in our lives? Our enemies. When our enemies attack us, that reminds us we need to look heavenward and ask Hashem for help instead of raising up our hands and saying, it's us. It's us. We're the victors. So the Sfarno actually picks up on this. The Sfarno actually is, is not happy with the fact that the Jewish people are leaving Biyad Rama. And that's why his commentary says, Uvnei so yotzi'im Biyad Rama, ki'in yan yadenu Rama, as he quotes from Parshas Ha'azinu, like I did before. They figured, look at us. We made it into the end zone. We're out of Egypt. And ah, what are they going to do to us now? They can't harm us. Right? He says, because they look at the small numbers of the Egyptian army that are standing at the border, you know, just waiting to go after them. And they're saying, ah, They'll never be able to hurt us. We're a whole nation. We're 600,000 men. How are they ever going to hurt us? And of course, this is only indicative of their ignorance about the ways of war. He says, because in reality, there was more reason to fear that small little army of Paro that was initially following them than there was to worry about the multitudes that eventually followed after them as they approached closer to the Red Sea and the nation realized that they weren't coming back after three days. That initial army that followed behind the Jews when they first left and the Jews said, we're free at last, we're free at last, they should not have been so smug, they should not have been so confident because that little army could have wiped them out at any time. You know, when I read the, the Sephorno, um, I, I think of, you know, those, uh, you know, uh, like that Abbott and Costello thing, the scene, uh, where uh, Costello is standing in front of Frankenstein with his back to Frankenstein. And he says, uh, and he says, he sees Abbott, he says, Abbott, you know, leave me alone. And then, and then Abbott starts to walk away. He says, yeah, that's right. You're not going to be able to mess with me. You don't start up with me. You know that famous scene, whether it's an ape or a Frankenstein monster, like the person thinks that the other person's scared of him because, you know, because I'm so, I'm so, I'm big, tough, and strong. When in reality, there's like a big ape or, you know, a Frankenstein behind him. And then and it turns around and goes, that, 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 right? You know, that, that famous slapstick, you know, that's... But that's the way the Jewish people were acting, is that they felt, yeah, you can't hurt us. Little do they realize that the Red Sea is right behind them. And then that's immediately the scene that comes after this, is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu forces them to realign their thinking and makes them realize... Right? Like, like two psukim later. They come to the Red Sea. They see the army. They say, uh-oh. Uh, start pulling their hands slowly down. And they realize that we really shouldn't be so confident. And so uh, the, uh, the, the last thing that I wanted to share with you is that there are other times when a raised hand has a totally different meaning. A raised hand can sometimes be a raising of hands to Hashem. And this, an example of this is you find this in the story of Avraham Avinu after his victory over the four kings. 
In source number six, it says, Vayomer Avram el Melech Sedom. Avram says to the king of Sedom, I remote Yadiel Hashem Kelalion Kaneshemaim Varetz. I lift up my hand to the Lord of Up High, who is the owner of heaven and earth. In Michut Ve'at Shochnal, I'm not going to take a shoelace or a bootlace of yours. I'm not taking anything of yours. So the lifting up of a hand is actually a pointing upwards to Hashem and saying that I don't want Hashem's in charge and it's not me. And so, and we have this also, we have the same theme with Shlomo HaMelech. That what does it say? That when he was davening at the dedication of the temple in the eighth chapter of Malachim Aleph, it says, V'chapav pruso tashman, his hands were spread out towards the heavens. And so, it's just a very, very simple, very subtle difference in gesture. When you want to indicate victory, your hands are like this. When you want to indicate your dependence upon God, you open up your hands. So it's a very, very subtle distinction. And perhaps what Hashem was trying to show to the Jewish people is that the next time you're prepared to lift up your hands and do that victory dance, maybe just turn your hands upwards to heaven and say, Hashem, it's because of you, not because of me. The last thing that I want to sh show you is that I believe that the Torah deliberately is teaching the Jewish people that lesson because the very last episode that we have in Parshas B'Shalach is the war with Amalek. And it's no coincidence that just as our Parsha started with raised hands, our Parsha ends with raised hands. Where are the raised hands at the end of the Parsha? The Jewish people are fighting with Amalek. Yehoshua is leading them into battle. And where is Moshe? He's sitting on a rock. And Aharon and Chor are supporting his arms. That when Moshe lifted up his hands, the Jewish people were successful in battle. The Chasher Yaniach the like when he would let his hands down, because he was getting tired, so then Amalek would be successful. The Mishnah even asked this as a question, like, what's this all about? Is it like a, is it like a magic trick? Right? Is it, is it dependent upon Moshe's hands to determine whether God will be on their side or not? Says the Mishnah, when Moshe lifted up his hands to heaven, he directed people's attention to turn their eyes heavenward and their hopes heavenward. And this was the ultimate lesson. Don't leave Egypt like this. Don't say, yadi. don't say that it's my victory dance. Anytime you're experiencing great things in life, realize two things. Number one, what's right around the corner from this experience? Let me not be so haughty and think that everything is great. It was like the, in the Super Bowl when by the, by the end of the first half, everyone turned off their TV sets and went to bed because they assumed that Atlanta won the game. But you don't know what's, gonna, what's right around the corner. You might get hit with the Red Sea in front of you or the Patriots might be infused with some kind of divine aid. Who knows why, right? Because maybe their coach said that leading a base of a football team is like uh, learning Talmud. You see that article? Where he said it's a, a Jewish owner of the uh, New England Patriots. Kraft. He said that, that preparing a team for a Super Bowl victory is like learning a page of Talmud. It takes perseverance. It takes effort. It takes concentration. You can't just, maybe that's why they won. Who knows? But, you know, he, he gave the commencement address in 2006, 15, I think, or 16, 2016 commencement address at Yeshiva University. He was the owner of the uh, New England Patriots. So we have a lot to be proud of. But the point is, don't lift up your hands like this. Lift up your hands like this and look heavenward. And that's where your divine aid comes from. Take some questions. Yes. Those comments. words, Moshe, were reverberating through my head while you were saying this. Where is that from? It's a mission in Masechet Yom. That's what you were quoting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I didn't. I just didn't copy it for you. Sorry. So is, yeah. there, is there an expression a nine Ramos? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, haughty eyes. Mm -hmm. Condescending haughty eyes. Ain't I'm remote, we say it in the Vidui. 
say it in the confessional on Yom Kippur. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha beinayim rabo. Okay, everyone, have a great day. Rabbi Karakin, on behalf of the class and appreciation for all your efforts in giving us inspiration and education, giving you these and open the thing up. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm truly, I'm truly humbled. Thank you very much. And the card says, uh, thank you for the wonderful Tuesday morning class. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the Tuesday morning class. Without you, I got nothing to do Tuesday morning. Yes. <laughs> Matzah plate that says Allah oh, Ma'anya. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I'll treasure this. Thank you.